Internal linking is probably one of the most underrated SEO strategies and it is one that you have control over. Imagine you run a blog and you have many external pages on the web linking to this page. These links are called backlinks. However, this page is not internally linked to other pages of your site. So in the eyes of the search engines, they will see that this page is very authoritative because many other sites on the web have given their vote of confidence that your page is good. Now, search engines also see that other pages of your site are not as important. So only this page on your site will benefit from those backlinks. Now, if you have added internal links to other pages of your site, those other pages will benefit from the backlinks and they will rank higher on keywords those pages are targeting. And in case you are a total beginner and you don't know what an internal link is, when you visit a web page, for example, one of RankMap's blog content, and you are able to click on a text that leads you to another page of the same website. You see, this links you to another page on Rank Math. This link right here is called an internal link. And the text that is wrapped by the link is called anchor text, which we will talk about it in a while. And now if a link sends you to a page that is not on the same website, which is the case for this link, this sends you to an external page. It is called an external link. And in this video, we're going to discuss some of the best practices for internal linking that can potentially boost your search traffic tremendously. Let's go. Hey, it's Jack from RankMath, the one SEO plugin that empowers millions of WordPress sites. And this channel is all about helping you grow your search traffic. So if you're new to us, subscribe. So apart from helping your site spread link equity or authority, internal linking helps your site visitors navigate and find relevant content easier. And it also helps search engines find and crawl your content easier as well. Internal links are very significant to SEO. And that's why as a rank map user in one of our SEO checks, we look for at least one internal link on all of your pages. If you haven't added an internal link, you will see this instead. And this is not the only tool that helps with internal linking. There are a couple more which I will share with you in a while. But for now, let's get into the best practices for internal linking. If you have been following our channel, you know we have talked about pillar pages, topic clustering, content hubs, and silo structure, and they are all relevant to internal linking. Just to give you an overview, when you are starting a new website, you should try to adopt the silo structure. A silo structure simply means segregating your content into different categories and subcategories, and you add internal links to the content within the same category. However, you rarely add internal links to content of other categories, and that's the basic of a silo structure. And if we look deeper into the category, this is basically what we call topic clustering, where you group content that supports one main topic. For example, if the main topic or category is about dog food, you could have content about dog food for sensitive skin, homemade dog food recipes, dog food allergies, wet versus dry dog food, etc. And all these contents have internal links between each of them, and they all support the main topic which is dog food. This is a classic example of topic clustering. Now within each category, there should be one most important page. It could be the category page itself, or it could be a separate page. Basically, this should be the most important page in the category that aligns with your business goals. And all the other pages in the same topic cluster will have internal links pointing to this page. And this page is what we call the pillar content. As a rank map user, we have a pillar content tool for you. For example, I have this category called BBQ Guest Grills, which has three contents in it right now. And these are the contents. I have not set a pillar contents for the category yet. So assuming I want this content about the five best guest grills as the pillar content, what I would do is to go to the page editor, then click on the rank maps tab, and check this box right under the focus keyword field, where it says this post is a pillar content, and you want to save changes. And this means that this page is the most important page in the category. And what you want to do next is to have all these pages in the same category internally linked to this page. And the next time you create a new post, say the topic is 5 common guest grill problems and how to fix them. As you select the category as guest grills and you save as draft, refresh the page, check out right below the post settings. If you don't see this, you want to click on this. This is the page settings. You will see this section called link suggestions. And it suggests that you link to this page, to the pillar content. You can either click on this to copy the link, or you can click on this to include it in your content. 
This is the function of our pillar content. That's how you utilize Rank Maps pillar contents feature. Now, once your site is more established, you have done the silo structure, topic clustering, and the pillar content, you can look into transforming your site structure into content hubs. And there are many different types, like the hubs and spokes model, topic gateway, content library, etc. We have talked about all these concepts in detail through these videos. So if you want to learn more about them, you can check them out. The links are in the description. So implementing these frameworks are considered best practice for internal linking because internal links come naturally as part of the process. Open pages are pages on your sites that do not have any internal links pointing to them. As you know, search engines rely on internal links to find pages on your site. So if a page does not have any internal links pointing to them, it makes it harder for search engines to find it and your site visitors may not even know that the page exists and that can negatively impact SEO. The big question is, how do you find orphan pages on your site? If you are a Rank Math Pro user, the process of finding orphan pages is very simple. You can go to the post list, and we have this filter right here where you can select orphan posts. Then click on filter, and you have all the posts that do not have any internal links pointing to them. So you want to read other posts related to these orphan pages and add internal links that point back to these orphan pages. If you don't have Rank Math Pro, you can still find orphan pages easily. When you go to your post list, take note of this icon called incoming links. This will tell you how many pages on your website are linking to this page. So if it is zero, then it is an orphan page. So as you scroll through your post list, if you identify any zeros, then you will have to add internal links pointing to that page. But anyway, the rank map filter works on the page list as well. You will see the same filter right here where you can filter out the orphan pages. Heard of the term, leave no one behind? If your site is going to prosper, you want all your pages to prosper. And it starts with having no orphan pages. As I've mentioned earlier, anchor text is the text that describes the link. It is the clickable text. Optimizing it is important for SEO because it gives context to both users and search engines on what they can expect on the next page, and this improves user experience. So when you're trying to optimize your anchor text, avoid using text like click here, read more, and other similar ones. Your anchor text should provide a clear description of what the next page is going to be about. For example, when we read this sentence, and at the end it says, which helps to create keyword clusters with just a few clicks, and the anchor text is create keyword clusters. As a site visitor, I would expect the next page is going to teach me how to create keyword clusters. If I click through to the next page, there you go. It is a page that teaches me how to create keyword clusters. The opposite of this, which you shouldn't do, is to add an anchor text that either does not clearly describe what the next page is about, or worse, you add an anchor text that misleads people. People are expecting A, but you're giving them B. Another thing I want to touch on about anchor text is that you do not want to overuse the same anchor text for several articles. For example, let's say that you have an article about dog food for puppies, and you link to a page about best dog food using the anchor text dog food. Then in another article about dog nutrition, you add a link to a page about dog food brands using the same anchor text dog food. And later, when you add an article about dog food for seniors, you link to a page about dog food recipes, again using the same anchor text dog food. If you were the search engines, you'll probably be confused too, right? Dog food describes all these pages, but they are about different topics. So how do you know which page is more important for specific queries? By using the same anchor text dog food for multiple pages, you are missing the chance to help search engines understand which keywords matter for each page. So it's more helpful to use specific descriptive anchor text, ideally with a rankable keyword. For example, when linking to a page about best dog food brands, using best dog food brands as the anchor text will make it clear that this page is important for that topic. Similarly, using dog food recipes when talking about that page helps search engines identify its relevance. One more thing, while it is good to have descriptive anchor text for each page of your site, you should not over-optimize or overuse the same anchor text. You should have a variety. For example, if you have used best dog food brands as an anchor text to link to this page, the next time you want to link to the same page, you would use a different anchor text such as leading dog food brands or popular dog food brands or best selling dog food brands. I hope you get what I mean. 
One of the best practices in SEO is to update your old content because if your pages are not updated, they become less relevant and as a result, those pages will start to lose traffic. So you should always update your old content and keep them relevant, but there is one more thing you should do. On top of just updating your old content, you should add internal links from your more authoritative pages to your newly updated page. By doing so, you are sending signals to search engines that the page you have just updated will continue to be important. Of course, you cannot force a link. They have to be natural. So when you find an opportunity, make sure that you add anchor text that includes relevant keywords. There are three things to avoid when doing internal linking. The first is overlinking. It can be linking too many times to the same page. For example, on this page, you see, in the first instance, we have linked to this best pellet smoker page. But every chance you see a pellet or a pellet smoker text, you place the same link over and over again throughout the page. So try not to overlink to the same page too many times. I think once or twice is good enough. Overlinking can also mean that you are linking too many times to different pages. Adding an excessive number of links to various pages can overwhelm your site visitors and search engines may struggle to determine which pages are more important hence diminishing the value of each link. So you should prioritize relevance and user experience. Only link to relevant pages that enhances the search visitor's understanding of the topic. And the last thing about overlinking is link cluttering. From the example I've shown you earlier, you can see that in just the introduction itself, there is one, two, three, four, five links crammed together in this short introduction. You want to spread the link throughout the rest of the page, but you gotta make sure that it is natural. I guess this can be avoided if you are not overlinking. But the big question is, how many internal links are too many and how many are too little? And to be honest, there is no perfect number of links, but you can rely on the analysis of an AI. If you have one of the content AI subscriptions, you can utilize your credits towards the research tool. Just add your focus keyword here, which is the keyword you want your content to rank, select your target audience. As you hit research, the tool will scrape the content ranking for your targeted keyword, analyze it, and provide you with smart suggestions. One of the suggestions is the number of internal links you should add. As you can see here, it is recommending me to add 20 internal links on the page, but currently there is only three internal links. So this will give you a good gauge on how many internal links you should have on your page. Other than overlinking, you should avoid improper link hierarchy. For example, if a page is about dog food, you don't want to link it to a page about cat food. Don't link just for the sake of having an internal link. If you follow best practice number one we have mentioned earlier about site hierarchy, you shouldn't have a problem with this. The last mistake you should avoid about internal linking is not optimizing it for mobile devices. For example, if your page is not optimized for mobile, it will be tough for your site visitors to expand and click on the link. So if you want to know if your site is optimized for mobile, you can visit this mobile friendliness test tool by Bing. This is the link. We have left the same link in the description. So just paste your URL here and hit analyze. Give it a while, and it will tell you if your page is mobile optimized or not, and if your links and tab targets are too small or too close together. So these are the three things you should avoid for internal linking. Monitoring your links on Google Search Console can help you identify which pages are receiving the most internal and external links and how link equity is distributed across your site. And if you have a page that has a lot of external links or backlinks pointing to it, you can leverage that page and link it to a page that has the most internal links so that the link equity is spread across your site. For example, on your Search Console, you want to click on the Links tab and then you will see a list of pages with the most external and internal links. As you can see, this page on a site about YouTube niches has the most backlinks, so you can find a page in the list of internal links that relates to the same topic. For example, this YouTube tips page. This page has a lot of internal links. So you can place an internal link from this page with the most backlinks to the most relevant page with the most internal links. This will help spread the link equity across your site. So these are the best practices for internal linking. If you are getting value from this, do help us out by smashing that thumbs up. If you have any other best practices I have not mentioned, or if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to let us know in the comments down below. Our channel is all about helping you grow your search traffic. So if you haven't subscribed to us, consider doing so. This is Jack from Rank Math. I'll see you in the next video.